Welcome to Module 8, which will focus on finalizing your teacher portfolio. We'll discuss steps for collecting remaining items and rounding out your teacher portfolio. Afterwards, Lesson 2 will focus on how to build an online teacher portfolio. Back in Module 6, we discussed artifacts or evidence of your teaching. To create a well-rounded and comprehensive teacher portfolio, you will need to collect a wide and varied range of portfolio items to show who you are as a teacher. As a reminder, artifacts can be personal in nature, reflecting your beliefs, education, and experiences as a teacher, such as the ones listed here, some of which you may already have. Do you have more personal artifacts that you can add? Artifacts can also come from your classroom practice, generally a very plentiful source. These day-to-day -day items often represent the heart and soul of your work as a language educator and demonstrate what you are capable of. For example, your course syllabi can demonstrate the range of subject matter you can teach and how you do so. Reading materials used, grading and attendance policies, student learning outcomes, etc. From these courses, you can gather successful examples of class materials you've created. For example, activities, worksheets, lesson plans, and so forth. Do you have more practice-related artifacts you could include in your collection? Curate the best ones for your portfolio. Finally, don't forget artifacts from your contributions to the field or professional growth. Those show your influence beyond the classroom and can be quite impressive. Do you have some that you haven't included yet, which could enhance your portfolio? In addition to the artifact types we've just mentioned, here are some other items to consider including in your portfolio. Did you receive student evaluations at the end of your courses? A handy strategy is to review them and write up a brief summary to keep with them. What worked well and what needed to be improved for your future reference? What particular aspects did students comment on the most? Are there good revealing quotes that you can pull from them? These quotes can be used to good purpose in your cover letters or your interviews to demonstrate the impact your teaching has had. If your department or program regularly conducts peer or supervisor observations of your teaching and writes them up, those could also serve as useful evidence for your teacher portfolio or interview. Some universities may also have a Center for Teaching Excellence, which offers classroom observation or midterm evaluation services to give you insight into your teaching and write up the findings for your benefit and your portfolio. Nowadays, more and more, employers are asking for videos of a candidate's teaching, especially as they make it onto the short list. As such, it is good to have some representative video recordings as part of your portfolio in case you are ever asked for them. If you do this in advance, you can plan it for maximum impact rather than hurriedly trying to throw something together in perhaps less than ideal conditions. Before you do anything, first find out about your institution's policy on video recording students. Is it allowed? Some institutions, such as K-12 schools, may have prohibitions or strict procedures to follow, including getting parental permission. Make sure you follow them. Do you need to file for any approvals? Are there standard permission or release forms available for you to use? Are there restrictions on how the recordings may be used? Understand all that is involved before proceeding. If video recording is approved, next, make sure you have access to the appropriate equipment, whether owned or borrowed. Think of how you want the eventual recording to look. A video camera on a tripod with appropriate microphones may produce a better quality recording than for example, a handheld mobile device. If you are conducting your class online, for example, using a video conferencing app such as Zoom, recording functions may be built in and easy to manage. It is a good strategy to enlist someone to do the recording so you can concentrate on your teaching. 
If you discuss in advance with this person what you would like focused on and highlighted during the recording, for example, close-ups of student group work, your interaction with the students, etc., it will give your helper guidance on how the recording should proceed. If your helper is a colleague, you may want to return the favor by offering to record their classroom for their portfolio in exchange. After you've finished, review your recording. It is doubtful that an employer will ask to see an entire class session, so try to find good, meaty, representative clips. When selecting them, think of what you are trying to show about your teaching in a given clip. Try also writing reflective comments to accompany each clip to give context and let the viewer know what you're trying to express about your teaching. In this way, you can have good quality clips ready in case you are asked for them or if you wish to feature some in your online portfolio. Finally, for those on the PhD track, you should also consider crafting a philosophy of research statement, which summarizes your previous and current research, its potential contribution to the field, your research approach, and plans for future research. For guidance and tips on writing research statements, please refer to the Dig Deeper resources for this lesson or in Module 3. Depending on the focus of your PhD or employment, you may wish to write other types of statements, such as a philosophy of educational administration or a philosophy of advising. You may wish to consult with your faculty advisor on resources or tips for writing any of these specialty statements. Building a comprehensive and well-rounded teacher portfolio takes time, but hopefully these tips modules will help you create and bring all the necessary components together by the time you are seeking a job. Since we originally created tips with master students in mind, we developed a sample two-year plan that can be used as a guide. You can find the link to it in this lesson's Dig Deeper section or on the TIPS website. Finally, adding to your teacher portfolio does not stop when you get a job. As you gain more teaching experience, make greater accomplishments, and enhance your skills, you need to continually update it. Portfolios, or tailored versions of them, are often submitted as proof of professional growth and impact for promotions or awards. For example, at universities, dossiers, as they are called there, are submitted for the all-important tenure and promotion decisions, which help ensure job security and higher grades of pay. Putting together a teacher portfolio is thus a lifetime endeavor and a testament to your life in the profession. So use the reminders and resources here and tips to build and develop your teacher portfolio. And don't stop there. Consider sharing a curated version of it online. More on that in the next lesson. Next up, test what you've learned in the Think section. Check out the Dig Deeper resources for even more strategies and tips. In the Discuss section, respond to the following prompt. What portfolio items do you plan to gather next? Do you anticipate any potential problems obtaining or preparing them? Thanks for joining us today.